Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on these gorgeous little balloons that you see right here. Oh, simply divine. Now we're working on these balloons for a project that we are creating, an annual project that we're creating here on the channel at Wow Crochet Designs and it is a wreath and we haven't made the wreath yet. We are going to make it next week now that I've worked out how to make one. It took me a long time playing with stitches but it's coming up I promise. In the meantime this this is going to be our January project. This is how far behind we are. If you're joining us new, welcome. Um, we are a little bit behind. I was supposed to start the wreath in January. I mean, we're in, what are we in? May. Oh my gosh, it's a long way away. So this is our very first project. We have done butterflies and I haven't, can't remember what month we did that in. But every month we are choosing one item to make to attach to our wreath. Get excited, guys. I'm excited and I love these gorgeous balloons that you see right here. Now, uh, what you will need, okay, you will need, I've forgotten the label of this and the green and the blue. I don't know where they are, but I know the yarn. It's called Ren, W-R-E-N, and it is an eight ply or a DK weight um, or a number three weight overseas, yep. Um, the colour combination chosen today was chosen by the lovely Anne McSee on one of our live antics on Saturday mornings at 10am, Melbourne, Australia time by the way guys. We have lives also on Wednesday at 4pm in the afternoon, again Melbourne, Australia time. But on Saturday mornings live, one subscriber on the live gets a chance to choose a colour combination of our next tutorial and that was the lovely Anne McSee and Anne has chosen these beautiful colors and you can pop your balloons in any way you like I've got threads attached and I'll talk about that in a minute any way you'd like now just a quick heads up you'll probably notice that one of them looks a little bit smaller than the other yeah and actually they all look different sizes but they're all <laughs> the same well no two of them are the same hook the green and the pink were made in the four millimeter hook and the blue was made in the 3.5 millimeter hook. I did this one off air and the pink one off air. The pink one uh, was the second one I produced. I practiced with the green and then produced the pink one but we're going to make the green one today which is exactly the same as the pink. It looks a little smaller but it actually isn't. It might be that the thread texture of the thread was a little bit smaller. Maybe I crocheted a lot tighter this morning. I don't know, but it's the same hook and the same yarn and the same pattern. So bear with me on that. But it doesn't matter. If you wanted to make a smaller one, just drop a hook size. However, be weary that when you make it smaller, it can turn up a little bit because uh, the hook size used when you use a smaller hook it tightens everything up now if you are a tight crocheter like me that can give a tiny little bit of a lift this guy doesn't have the lift this guy doesn't have the lift but the blue one has a really big lift it doesn't matter because we are attaching ours to the wreath so it doesn't really matter this can also be used by the way to make birthday cards or Christmas cards or whatever cards you'd like to make Easter Christmas birthday celebration any kind of celebration card that you'd like to make you can make these and glue them or even sew them to card and you can make your own greeting cards for your family and friends so there you go all right in the meantime um today what we're going to use is the eight ply let's try that again the eight ply green <laughs> <laughs> or DK weight or number three we are going to use the four millimeter hook we will be using a pair of scissors we will be using a sewing needle you need a nice thin one to fit through the eight ply yeah and we're using two stitch markers now uh, heads up I didn't weave in the last end because we're going to use that end to attach to the wreath but if you are not making the wreath with us then weave your last end in. All right. So thank you very much. I'm trying to hide the tail. So thank you very much for joining us today. I'm not going to keep you anymore. I'm just going to let you head off on your own, creating your gorgeous little, or three, I should say, balloons. Good luck all. All right, guys, we're going to start off by making a slip knot. Okay. But before we do, we really need to give ourselves about a hand's worth of thread to play with later for the string of the balloon. So pop your hand there, grab that little spot, wrap it around your finger once and twice, 
holding it there, holding it down there. All right. Passing your back loop halfway over your finger, like so. Passing the other loop all the way over. Pop your hook in the loop and just give everything a tug. And what you have is that. That tail's probably too long. You really need just, you know, a hand's worth. I've just done it too long. I don't know what I did. It doesn't matter. It's long. <laughs> <laughs> it's long. All right, so we are going to chain three and a chain is yarn over your hook, pull a loop through once, yarn over twice, yarn over and we're going to do it the third time. All right, and now what we're going to do is pop a single crochet in that very first stitch that you see there. All right, so you're popping your hook in that little loop, pull a loop through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Popping a stitch marker in that single crochet. Now it's not really necessary for you to put stitch markers in. I'm doing this for the new crochet. Now this is a super easy pattern and it'll be nice and quick for you too. In the very next stitch you're going to do a, another single crochet. You don't need a stitch marker in that one, like so. And we're going to chain one and then we're going to turn our work and work in these two stitches that we just created. In the first stitch you're doing two single crochets. So one and then pop a stitch marker in the first one. Oh, grab your stitch marker. These are really big stitch markers. I should have found small ones for this particular tutorial but it doesn't matter. You're going to put a second single crochet in the same space like so. And in that next stitch Mm, it's really tight. You're going to put two single crochets. One. I'm going to take my stitch marker out because it's, oh, I've actually split the yarn. That's why it's extra tight for me. Oh dear. Let me take the stitch marker out. If you haven't split your yarn, that's okay. But yours truly has. And we're going to take it out. All right. So putting two single crochets. Look, you can see the split. Can you believe it? two single crochets in that stitch right there. Like so, one and two. And chain one, turn your work. And you should now have four single crochets across. And let me see if we can count them. That's the little V's that you see right here. So that's one, two, three and four and then that little loop up there the V up there is just a chain you don't count that this chain in the beginning of the rows do not count in this tutorial okay so in that very first stitch that you see right there so you're skipping the chain that you made yeah so you're going in that very first stitch you are doing one single crochet popping your stitch marker in it's fallen around the other side that'll teach me let's all and then single crochet across, just one in every stitch. So you're going into the stitch with two loops on top, like so. Two and three. And your fourth single crochet goes in that stitch right there. I don't think I split it this time, which is good, but it's very tight. So I'm going to take out my stitch marker. So do one single crochet in there, like so. And so you should still have four single crochets across, yeah? Chain one, turn your work. Now we're going to be adding two single crochets on each side. So we're doing a, an increased round, yeah? I'm sorry, let's try increased row. One single crochet in your first stitch and pop your stitch marker in there, like so. Oops. And then you're going to do a second one in the same stitch, like so. That row that we just did was still four single crochets across here. Yeah? Now we're going to do one in the next two stitches, one and two. And we're going to put two single crochets in the last one with our stitch marker. So one and two. You can take out your stitch marker if it's too tight. This one's not so tight this time. All right, so take out this stitch marker, leave the other one in for now. And what you should have now is six across. So one, 
two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah. Chain one. Oops, chain one. Turn your work. And a single in your first stitch. And the stitch marker goes in like so. And we are doing single crochet across. So one we've got there. This is your second one. And three. Four. Five. Mm, don't get in there. And six in the last stitch. No, the six goes in the last stitch. You don't need to put six stitches in there. <laughs> Come on, Mary, stay focused. All right, so we are chaining one, flipping our work. So what you should have now, and what we're going to do is count them. You should have six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you've done that one. We are going to do one last increase row. So turn your work like normal, single in your first, add your stitch marker, like so. and a second single crochet in the same stitch that you are in and then one across you've got two there so this is your third stitch fourth fifth sixth and in your last stitch you are putting two single crochets so that's seven and eight all right now we're going to take out the stitch marker chain or one turn your work just got to get my thread it's got all caught up sorry guys give me one moment all right this row here is just going to be your plain row we are doing a single crochet in your first stitch Stitch marker in. And a single all the way across. Two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. It's really tight, that one. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Six. Seven and eight, like that. Taking out that stitch marker, chain one, turn your work. All right, now what we're going to do is do exactly the same row that we just did. So, single in your first. And your second, oh, pop your stitch marker in. Hello. And your second. And all the way across. I don't think we need to count anymore. You should still have eight stitches in your row. Almost there. Almost there. And then we'll start decreasing in the next row. Taking out that stitch marker as you would any other row. Chain your one as you would any other row. Turn your work. And now we're going to do what we call a decrease. But we're not doing two together in this particular tutorial. Because it doesn't come up too well. It gives more of a pointed edge okay and we want more of a rounded edge so what we're going to do normally we would put a single crochet in the first stitch we're going to skip it and put it straight into the second stitch so single into your second and all the way across until you get to the last two stitches so don't do the last two stitches just do your singles across We're almost there oh yes here we go that's the last one and now you're going to skip that second stitch jumping into your first stitch with a single crochet all right a little different with decreasing in this particular 
tutorial, but it works better, trust me. Chain one, turn your work. We're doing a single crochet across. So single in your first. I think I forgot to leave a stitch marker there, but it doesn't matter. Just, just keep going, <laughs> like normal. So we're doing normal single crochets across in every stitch, and off you go. All the way across. I'm sorry I didn't put that stitch marker in that first stitch. But you'll see it. You'll have like a, a single crochet and then like a little flatter edge there. You're just doing a single crochet in there. Now if that doesn't help you, what will help you is the amount of stitches across. So one, two, three, four, five, six, because we decreased two before. Yeah, chain one. Turn your work, skip the first stitch because this is a decreased row, jump into your second and do your single crochet. This time I'll remember to put the stitch marker in, like so. Single into your next, into your next and you've got two stitches left. Skip the second last one jumping straight into the last one with a single crochet. Taking out your stitch marker, chain one, turn your work, skip the first stitch. We're going to do a last decrease row, jump into your second and do a single crochet. Uh, no, we don't need stitch markers here. I'll put it in anyway. Pop your stitch marker in there. Actually, it is a good idea to have it for this particular row. And skip the second and jump straight into your last with a single crochet. Take out your stitch marker, chain one. And what you're going to do here now is a little different. We're going to be popping a single crochet in the same stitch that you are in, one. And then we're going to work along the sides, single two. You see where I'm going into? Just some spaces. Single three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And when we go here, you can pop your hook in the point, which is 12, with one and two, leaving the tail. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. One. Sorry. Let's try that again. When you do the second one, you just pop your tail at the back. So the first one was okay, but your second one, you need to pop your tail at the back so your tail is there. Yeah. Then... You single crochet across again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So what we have here is this now. This section here, that's where our last, I'm trying, let's start that again. That's where our first stitch was. And then we ended up skipping a space here to close it up. But we are actually going to pop a single crochet in that space before our stitch. So pop your single crochet in that 11th space, but don't complete it. Grab your scissors, whoops and cut, it was, wasn't even in the frame anyway, cut your thread, just a little bit of thread there. All right, and just pull that loop through gently, not too tight, just gently. Grab your sewing needle. I'm just gonna give it a cut again. It's a little bit frayed this yarn. I've been practicing with the green on off air, sorry. And, um, <laughs> and I just, Look at this. Look at that. Don't you love it? Don't you love it? Just bear with me, guys. I'm going to thread this off air. Give me a moment. 
All right, so there we go. I threaded it three times and had to cut it three times, so it's gotten real short. But anyway, hopefully yours is longer than mine. So there's the stitch marker. We actually want to pass this thread into the stitch with a stitch marker, but not into the whole stitch. Now let me give you a close-up. There's your stitch marker, and you've got your front loop, and you've got your back loop at the back. I'm going to do it with a needle because the big finger is no good. So you've got your front loop there, and your back loop at the back. You're going to pop your thread down through the back loop. So let's take out that stitch marker for now. And this is the loop you're going to pop your thread into. So oh, I can't even see from the top of the camera there. Down there. So down the back of that stitch, pull it through like so. Now don't pull that stitch to tight that thread too tight and then you're going to come right back into the stitch that you are in here through that back loop right now I don't like doing this join very much but it actually works better on the balloon in this case it doesn't always work for me but it does work better for a balloon so it covers that it gives you kind of more of a rounded shape it's a tiny little bit squarish but it's a bit more of a rounded shape if you had the knot there the knot would be sticking up in the air yeah so flip your work and now with this particular thread you are going to weave it in through the back of some stitches anywhere you want just make sure you cannot see just through a couple of stitches though you're going to need to keep this thread to help sew it to your wreath now if you're not doing a wreath then you need to weave it in one way come back and then weave another way but we want to use ours to weave into the wreath once we're done all right so just pull that thread through but before you do make sure you can't see the needle from the front and you can't so i'm going to pull the thread through like so and just leave it like that no actually we won't if yours hopefully yours is longer than mine do bring it back just a couple of stitches this way it doesn't come undone before we attach it to the wreath which will be next week guys now that I've worked out the wreath so just pop that needle through and pull the last thread through if you're not using this thread do it through one more time maybe a bit further ours we're not going to because we're going to use this thread to attach to the wreath okay so leave that if you're using if you're doing yours like mine you're going to pop it on a wreath then leave it at the back and that is one balloon done all right so your job now is to make two more like that go ahead and do your other two balloons and meet me back here and we'll talk about what we're going to do next Alrighty guys, here's my three balloons. Now the middle one you might see is a little bit smaller because I used a 3.5. These two here were a four millimeter and this one here was a 3.5 millimeter. So it just depends on what you were looking for. I did find, however, that the 3.5 millimeter, because it's a little bit tight and I crochet tightly, did tend to turn it up a little bit but if you are going to be gluing yours down to a card um, or if you're going to be sewing yours onto the wreath that doesn't matter but the four millimeter hook they kind of worked a lot better so there you go all right so now that you've got your three balloons it depends on what you want to do with yours I am going to do just this move your little threads out the way because you don't need those for the moment we're going to bring all our balloons together like so. I might pop this green one under the blue and pop the blue one kind of. It doesn't have to be on top. It doesn't really matter. What you're going to do is grab all these tails yeah, and you're going to form a little knot. Like that. And what you have is, oh mine's probably too, you know what, mine's too long. I'm going to shorten these a little bit. I might have to take it undone to do it. Let's cut it. You don't do this, I'll do it. I just find mine too long. So I'm going to pop a, a little knot in it. All right, so when you've made your knot, which is there, like so, you can cut your, your threads as short or as long as you want. 
might leave it like this. It gives it more of an authentic look. If you want to make them straight, you can. Oh, you know what? Let's make them straight. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And we're done. All right. So oh, they're all turned around. But that's just the way I put them together. But there you go. There's your balloons. But what you need to do is you need to just hide this tail. I'll hide this tail when I take the photo later. Um, but this tail will not be noticed because that's what we're going to use to sew to our uh, wreath okay but for those of you who are making a card or making it for a card you can actually just weave your tail in and um, you can either put glue on your work or you can actually use the tail to sew to the card as well so you have a few options there but there you go that's our gorgeous balloons so thank you very much for joining us today. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Do all the wonderful things that you guys pretty much already do for me. And join us on our lives at 4pm Wednesday afternoons, 10am Saturday mornings, Melbourne, Australia time. Now we have a lot of fun on the lives. And once again, a subscriber who is actually on the live on our Saturday mornings live gets to choose the colour combination of our very next project. Thank you once again, Anne McSee, for your choice today. And I'll see everyone on our lives. Ciao for now.